What up, what up, what up, everybody? This is Dario Hunt from Living Life Fearless. Today's date is June 6, 2018. Welcome back to another episode of The Fearless Show. Today with me is Shannon Griffiths again. Say hello. Hi, guys. I haven't been around in a while, but I'm back. I mean, I never really went anywhere, but I'm back on the podcast. Back on the so, podcast. Yeah, it's nice to be here. And newcomer and contributor to the website, Steven Silver. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Uh, been a long time fan of a lot of your writing. Thank Hello. you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so, I mean, if you want to tell people kind of a little bit about yourself before we start. All right, sure. So, um, I live in the Philadelphia area. I'm a longtime writer and editor and journalist and film critic. Uh, my main job, I write for Apple Insider, which is an Apple uh, enthusiast site. Uh, I'm a writer and editor there. I just joined them a few months ago. Okay. Um, so I kind of write about tech and the intersection of, you know, Apple gadgets, but also with entertainment, also with uh, politics, also with uh, various way- places that Apple, uh, you know, affects our daily lives. Yeah. Um, and uh, aside from that, I've been a film critic for almost 20 years. I'm the co-founder of the Philadelphia Film Critics Circle. I co-host a podcast with them called Film Scribes. Uh, and I write movie reviews for Splice Today and Broad Street Review. Um, I write for a local site here in Philly called Philly Voice, uh, where I'm a contributor to the culture section. That's mostly for uh, interviews and things like that, uh, local stuff of local interest to Philly. So uh, I've done all kinds of writing. I've worked in uh, local television. I've worked in B2B kind of journalism. I've worked in newspaper. So I've kind of done a whole lot of things. Uh, and... Uh, my favorite thing to write about, though, is you know movies, TV, pop culture, and things like that. So, okay, and this is kind of cross promotion because you also have your own podcast, you do, right? Yes, it's called Film Scribes. You can get that on iTunes and wherever you find podcasts. Okay, yeah, we just ourselves got an iTunes, so know that whole. Oh, process. very nice. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so, I mean, today we're just going to talk about obviously film, TV, and what's going mm-hmm. on with that, especially in particular some of your uh, pieces that you wrote because I think they've had some some strong responses, especially yes. on the website, and people feel uh, some type of way about it one way or another. But um, I mean, before we start, is there anything in particular like TV or film that you are currently watching or looking forward to watching? Uh, well, when it comes to TV, um, this last season of Atlanta I thought was just excellent. Oh, it was, it was amazing. The first season was good, but the second one just like – hit a new level, just visually, just thematically, just it was funny, it was... Yeah. And um, Hiro Morai is the name of the director of a bunch of the episodes, and he's just like... That was incredible. I know, I know with TV, you, know, you never know if it's the showrunner or the director who's really responsible for stuff like that, but like, just the look and feel of that show is incredible. And he also did the... Uh, this is American video, right? This is American video yep. uh, with, with Donald Glover as well, so I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do with movies and things like that. And then... Uh, I wasn't really high on Solo, but I thought Donald Glover was one of, was one of the best uh, parts of that. Um, also, a TV Billions, this current season of Billions, I'm really loving that. And I thought, this is the third season, I thought the first was all right, the second was a lot better, and then this third one is just uh, really on a new level. It's funny, it's, uh, it's clever, it's... Uh, and what I really like about Billions is that, like, if you're someone who... Probably everybody who works on Wall Street, I'm sure, watches that show... But if you're someone who thinks Wall Street is the root of all evil, there's a lot to enjoy in it as well. Yeah. And it kind of is able to – and Silicon Valley is a similar thing where it's like people who hate Silicon Valley probably like that show because it pokes a lot of fun at Silicon Valley. But people who work in Silicon Valley love it as well because, you know, it's, it's their world. And they, so is it, they is it more them. of a comedy? Because I keep hearing about the show, but I've never actually – Well, Billions, it. it's, yeah. it's a drama. It's basically about uh, – the main plot is there's like the – there's this big Wall Street guy, this really wealthy Wall Street guy played by – Damian Lewis, who was on Homeland, he played uh, mm-hmm. uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Brody on Homeland the yeah. first couple seasons, and uh, Paul Giamatti plays the prosecutor who's trying to bust him, and it's just kind of them going back and forth. But then there's like a whole slew of really outstanding supporting characters who are great and played by really good actors, and there's always great guest stars and things like that. And it's it's a dramatic show, but there's also a lot of humor, and it's just the 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 writing is just incredibly witty. There's like a lot of pop culture references in a way that's done and, you know, cleverly and not, you know, a lot of the time it's just kind of a reach when you put pop culture references in a TV show, but in that case, it's really good. So, um, I now, 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's in Showtime. It's uh, it's about to be the season finale uh, this uh, this year um, or this sun- this coming Sunday. And the other really good show from the spring that I liked a lot was Killing Eve, which is a show on the BBC. It's with Sandra O, oh, and I can't tell you the name of the other actress because it was the first thing I ever saw her in. But it's it's basically about there's a woman who's an assassin, and then there's another woman who's trying to catch her, mm-hmm. and it's a lot of just back and forth with them. So and that show is just like it really. Uh, I didn't know what to expect from it, but I heard enough good things about it, so I watched it. It's uh, it's on BBC America, and there's only eight episodes, so it's really easy to catch up on that binging. Yeah, I think we just had TV. a piece about it about Phoebe Waller because she's so. the yeah, she's the lead or she's the writer on that one, right? And then she's the creator of it. Yeah, she's okay. not in it, or she might be in it. She might have had a small part, I think. But uh, she uh, she was the um creator and the showrunner of that. Okay, so yeah, there's a lot but, of list, uh, shows on the list that you know it's ever increasing like nonstop new shows oh, yeah. and popping up like every day now so it's kind of hard to keep up with everything but i do think there's like a trend of shows that are taking on like corporate america like uh mr robot yeah. i was a big fan of the first two seasons of that one it's kind of like silicon valley but more i don't know more intense uh i'm not really sure how i feel about that last season but it's i think there's a theme going on about shows about corporate america and everything and, and atlanta is definitely Probably my favorite show at the moment. Uh, it's just so so meta. Um, you never really ex- know what to expect yeah. and what direction they're gonna go. And even though they talk about certain themes, like they never talk about it in a direct manner. And they'll spend yeah. like a whole episode doing something that might not at the moment feel like they're going anywhere with it, and then it ties all the way back into like their whole point uh, for the whole episode. And it's kind of crazy. Like I think the one what was it with. Uh, it's kind of like the Michael Jackson episode, I want to say. Oh, Teddy um, Perkins. Was Teddy called, Perkins. Yeah, the, the guy's name was Teddy Perkins. Yeah, it was... Uh, that was one of the best episodes I'd ever seen on a TV show. I was like... Oh, yeah. I, I was speechless. I didn't even know really what to expect from it. And it wasn't... You you expected it to be a comedy, but it there was like almost nothing like funny. But it was... Yeah. It was so intense, and it was just completely unexpected and out of left field. I'm like, that's definitely my favorite show right now. Yeah, I mentioned it in the... Uh, in a piece I just uh, handed in for you, which uh, um, didn't go up on the site yet, but um, there's uh, the scene where the woman is, uh, she's supposed to be like a mommy vlogger and she's reciting uh, Paperboy's lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> and like, it's just, it's, it was, I know it was a parody of a thing that really happened. Yeah, it was something, it was just, that, something that really it happened. Was just, it was just so, it's like, she's quoting all these violent sexual lyrics and then she gets to shout out Colin Kaepernick and she starts crying. Like, that's <laughs> the part that bothers her the most. I mean, that was just, yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, there's just so many crazy moments on that show. It's, it's unbelievable that they can even put half the stuff out that they do on the, on the show, especially on cable. Um, but there's just a lot of moments. Like I think one of my other favorite moments was for sure uh, with the young black kid who identifies as like a 35 year old white man or whatever. That whole episode. Oh yeah. It was just like a whole aside, and it had nothing to do with the story, but it was just ridiculously funny. And that's just like the whole nature of the the show. It's like you will spend whole episodes not even continuing the story forward but like you have to watch every episode yeah and there'll be a whole episode about van and, yeah. and speaking of van uh if you saw deadpool 2 she was in that right and she stole she stole the show i thought she was maybe the best thing about that movie i have not seen deadpool 2 yet i've been out of the country uh, but I'm, that's definitely on my list of like top things to watch right now yeah i mean if you look at the, it's funny like the last uh this summer was so weird because everything came out in april and may like there was it was Deadpool, and then it was Solo, and then well, I mean, first Avengers, Infinity and then War, yeah. Solo. I mean, and Black Panther I like was not too long before that either. And, but yeah, but and Black Panther was in February. But like of those three, of of Deadpool, uh, Avengers, and and Solo, I thought Deadpool was the best of the three. Yeah, I, mean, I can I, see I, that. I, I think it's yeah, it knows itself so incredibly well, especially from the first one, and just from the trailer, it looked like it just nails everything that it's trying to do. Yeah, and they. Uh, they fired the director from the first one. I guess he had clashed with Ryan Reynolds, and they brought in a, a different director. It was a guy who did, uh, I think, I don't know if it was both of the John Wick movies or just one of them. And uh, this new director came in, and it just it didn't miss a beat. And, uh, yeah, uh, Zazie Beetz, I believe the actress's name is, yep. who was in, was in Atlanta. She was just yeah, incredible. Yeah, I saw she got the raw, I was like, oh, that's, that's dope. And this is a big cast that had, you know, just a, a ton of people. But, uh, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't real high on Infinity War. I didn't think... I was actually kind of bored about it, to be honest. Oh, really? Um, 
I mean, I know, I know I'm in the minority because most people like that, but uh, I just thought, um, I don't want to give away too much of the ending, but I thought the ending was, like, everybody was just so shocked by the ending. I'm just like, well, you just know, you know exactly <laughs> what you're going to do in the next one, and you know how it's going to, it, it's a thing that's, a lot of movies have this problem where it's like, they'll, uh, they'll build up, they'll, they'll, they'll have somebody die, and they'll give them a really emotional death scene, and they'll, you know, wring all of the emotion out of this person dying, and then... They just come alive, like me, either in the next movie or in the same movie. So, I mean, you yeah. know, it's, it's doing the comic book thing. Like, it's yeah, the same thing. Comic books, comic. You know? <laughs> There's yeah. no real such thing as death. I mean, like I said, we did a spoiler cast, so I don't want to ruin the entire yeah. uh, movie. But, uh, I mean, I think it's more so that people were surprised that Disney decided to do it, like leave an ending yeah. like that, because they normally don't like to leave endings like that. But, um, I mean, I wasn't surprised when it happened. I was like, well, I mean, if, especially if you know the comics, like, you know this was the way it was going to go regardless. I just, I mean, I was a fan just because I like Thanos so much as a character. I think they did a really huh. good job of actually giving him, like, giving you reason to actually care about him, like, as a villain, and, like, yeah. kind of believe that he can, he's kind of right, which is why I like so much, like, Killmonger and Black Panther. Is, yeah. Yeah, he's, he got a point. Like, it's not like, oh, I'm just going to take over the world and the universe just because I can. It's just like, well, he's making valid points the way he's going about it might not be, you know, the best way, but at the end of the day, he still is kind of right, and he's just, he was such a badass character. I was kind of worried, because, you know, they don't have a great track record with villains, especially, yeah. and I think, I think they did a really good job on that one. Um, well, I found Killmonger a lot more compelling, and I found, I found his motivations much more compelling, and it might just be that I like Black Panther a lot more, because it just... It, it had a story that it was telling, and it stuck to it, and it didn't feel the need to... And, and this has been an issue. Like, the way I talk about the a lot of the Marvel movies is I've, I've enjoyed most of them. I've, I've, I've enjoyed the, the... Probably two-thirds of them I've really, really liked. But yeah. it's just... They always have to set up the next movie, and they always have to service more characters than it's generally healthy for a movie to service. And yeah. in something like uh, Captain America Civil War or even the Captain America before that, I mean, they managed to nail it and they managed to just you know use that to their advantage but i thought you know black panther didn't feel the need to do that and that was one of the things i like most about it and yeah it was much and just, smaller and just, ryan and just ryan coogler in general is just a yeah, phenomenal director, a phenomenal director so sure. he's made he's made three movies now all of which were just great and they were so different from each other like yeah like fruitville station was just incredible and creed i mean creed was creed is a philadelphia movie and i'm in philadelphia and it was it was filmed I had a, uh, my office at the time was right down the street from the art museum and I still have the, uh, like flyer they gave us at the office that day saying, you know, caution, the streets might be closed because they're filming Creed here. It must've been when they shot the, the final yeah. scene when they're, when they're on top of the art museum steps. But, uh, yeah, that's a film where I just like, that's one where if it comes on cable, I just have to watch, watch it to the end. I mean, it was for me, one of the best Rocky movies out there for sure. Like it was not cliche like all the other Rocky films that started to get kind of towards the end. But, yeah, he's, he's incredible. Um, yeah. Shannon, I don't know. I don't think we ever got your opinion on Infinity War or any of the movies that came out. Yeah, I saw Infinity War and um, Deadpool 2. That's the last movie I saw was Deadpool. And I really liked Infinity War more than I thought I would. I mean, like I, I think I've said before, my boyfriend's like a huge superhero fan and I'm like a normal fan, like I enjoy them, but I never really read any of the comics or anything, so I kind of know what I know from the movies and him telling me stuff. But um, I think for as big of a movie as it was, and like you were saying, Stephen, like a lot of them try to have too many characters in one movie and it's just usually a mess. I thought they balanced the mix of characters pretty well. I felt like most characters got like their equal amount of screen time. Well, equals a, we'll put equal in quotation mm. marks. But um, yeah, the ending was kind of like, I highly doubt. Well, you guys might have seen the Twilight movies. I don't think you were as into them as I was, and a lot of I my saw peers. The first but, one, and I was, and I stopped after that. I was kind of triggered well, to watch the first one. The last movie had like a. Uh, scene that everybody thought was real and they were freaking out about it until we realized it was like a you know like a fake out like oh that's what could have happened but it didn't it actually like a dream happen or a premonition. Mm. 
basically. And then, yeah, you does. know, the ending of that, of Infinity War, kind of reminded me of that, even though I knew it wasn't. I was pretty sure that it was actually happening, but it reminded me of that moment where everybody was just kind of freaking out and, like, losing their minds for a little while until they realized what was happening. So that kind of, I don't know, that took me back. And I think my jaw was just kind of on the floor the whole time because, like, like you said, it was pretty much predictable. I mean, how they were going to do it, we didn't really know, but we knew they were going to do something dramatic like that. But just, I don't know. I don't really, like I said, I don't want to say too much. I don't want to spoil it, but I feel like everybody's seen it at this point. But just the way they went about it was the shocking part. The fact that they didn't, like, say anything definite. They just kind of let your mind wander and, like, kind of freak out a little bit. And you're not. That's, like, worse than killing someone off is not knowing what happens to them so if they want to be building suspense and making people want to see the next one which i don't think that's an issue people will always see the next yeah, one regardless. but mm-hmm. it's definitely a, it was a good way to go about that and um as far as deadpool i don't know if i was in a like bad mood when i saw it or if i just had too high of expectations but I liked it. I didn't like it as much as the first one. And I also didn't like the fact that there's a fra- there's like a name for the like the trope, but I can't think of what it's called right now, but I think it's like the woman in the freezer or something. Basically oh, f- they Frig- Frigine, I believe it is. Yeah, something like that. Basically they used I can't was her name Vanessa? His Vanessa, yeah. Yeah, Vanessa. They used her as like a means for his character development. Like they killed her off like in, in the very very beginning and then everything about the like everything plot wise kind of had to do with you know him getting revenge for her or like trying to find himself because he didn't know what to do now that she wasn't around and I don't know I thought that was kind of a cop out I don't think they needed to do that they could have like broken up and it could have been the same kind of movie but like I didn't really think that was necessary but it was still funny I still laughed but I liked the first one better so Mm. Yeah, I read about I read about that debate, but I think I didn't I didn't know about that trope, and I didn't read about it until I think a couple weeks after I saw the movie. But yeah, that's people saying that have a point. I would say um, now now like you said, um, I I never read comic books as a kid, and I'm not really sure why I never did. I kind of thought of myself as a nerdy kid, but that just wasn't something that was that I was into. And so it's weird that it kind of puts me at a loss with some of these movies. Where I mean. I know about Batman and Superman just from all the exposure I've had to Batman and Superman for my entire life, and yeah. and of all the, of, of the Marvel characters, I know them from the previous movies. And in Spider-Man's case, that's you know now three cycles of previous movies, but it's yeah. just, that's where I know. So with the with the Avengers movies, what sometimes happens is I see the movies most of the time once each. Maybe I'll see I might have seen the first Iron Man twice, but other than that, like I'll I'll see them once each, and then I won't really remember little details. Like, I won't remember... And that was one thing I didn't really love about Infinity War. It's like, they go to all these planets, and I don't recognize that planet. I don't remember which... or That planet or that supporting character who was in one of the movie. Like, I don't remember that guy. I don't remember what his powers are. I don't remember exactly why that guy's important and for what reason. And then it comes up to, like, well, what's the character motivation? Like, is that guy doing this for that reason because of the thing that happened in the movie five years ago that I don't remember. And I mean, mm-hmm. and most of these movies, I mean, like I said, I, I see them and I enjoy them, but you know, it does, I don't necessarily retain all the details the way that, you know, someone who's read all the books for their entire life does. Yeah. They do kind of have an expectation of you knowing something beforehand. Cause I mean, the movie was like a 10 year buildup. So there's yeah. so many moving parts and like so many different characters with like three movies with full on backstory to them, you know, that yeah. they kind of expect you to already know and they don't. And if they went to exposition about, you know, oh, this character does this, this character, I mean, it'd be like a bloated movie and like it killed the pace. So, I mean, you, they definitely expect you to have seen most of the category, like their catalog coming into the movie. Cause they don't waste any time. Like they go right into it, like right from the opening scene. And then like, they don't really let up from then. Um, but I think that's, I think I, I think that's why I was so impressed by it that it's it should be like an impossible movie to make because you have like right. thirty characters with full on backstories to each and you got to make them somehow work and then you're finally introducing like their big bad villain who has to like has to have all this 
background to him and about his motivations and everything. And like, and you have all these team ups with people that have never worked together, but then you guys somehow make it work. And like, I don't know. I think that's why I was so impressed by it, that it it should be an impossible movie to direct and film because there's just too much going on. And like, somehow they managed to get most of the stuff. I mean, some people for sure were. Not underdeveloped, but weren't given much screen time or, or much stuff to do. Like they just show up and then they do a couple of cool things here and there. And then that's it, you know. Um, yeah. They have like a cool team up, like us for the spectacle, like a fight or something, and then then that's it. They may say like one or two lines and and whatnot, but I think that's another reason why they went the way they did with the end because then with everybody who's left, like they're gonna I think make take a bigger role in that. But then even the next one, they're going to introduce new characters. So it's like, it's kind of hard to see like where they go, keep going from here. Like, cause you know, they're going to keep doing that, making so much money. And it's just like, yes, uh, it's kind of crazy that after ten, that this was even a reality. Cause I mean, this is kind of what we're going to go into what we talk about. Like, uh, your piece about, uh, nerd pandering. Yeah. With like red, ready player one, like, 10, 12 years ago, like, there's nobody would ever believe that this would be possible. Like, this would, you'd get these characters on screen, and, like, you'd get a whole Avengers series, and, like, and now that we have it, people kind of, like, take it for granted, you know? And, oh, yeah. like absolutely. And they, and like you said, they, <laughs> they can be some of the most, like, toxic fans and community out there, for sure. Like, look, we're finally giving you what you wanted, like, since you were a child, and, like, it is never good enough, I guess. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's it's a weird thing, like, because you love the community because they're such diehards, but then, like, at the same time, you hate it because they can take things way too far. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not everybody, clearly, and it's probably not even a majority of people, but yeah, there is... There's, there's a lot of minority. There. Yeah, and it's definitely... There's a mindset there of, you know... Nerds are being so much of this pop culture is being di- directed towards nerds, specifically male nerds, and so many of these debates are about whether these people are being pandered to quite enough. Like, look at the arguments that are being had about Star Wars now. Like yeah. Solo, which I mean, it made a hundred million dollars, but it made less than it was supposed to, and it made less than was exp- compared to the previous Star Wars movies. And so everybody's like, "Well, it's because you know they didn't." They had to have the the female robot character, and they had to have this stuff. Yeah, they, they called to... the SJW uh, movement. What do they always say, or something like that? Yeah, I'm not seeing what the <laughs> SJW stuff is in solo. I mean, other than the fact that you know it has women in it who speak and a black person in it who speaks. I mean, that's. I don't know if that's. I mean, is that an agenda by itself? I don't necessarily feel that it is, and or, and if it is an agenda, it's a good agenda to have. You know, because I read so, someone wrote about how like. I think in the original Star Wars trilogy, someone someone figured out how many lines are spoken by women other than Princess Leia, and it's like some ridiculously small amount. I can't Two. even think of any other women <laughs> in the original trilogy other than Princess Leia, honestly. Yeah, I mean, there's people who are, you know, with them with the Rebel, Rebel Alliance and some of them. I mean, there's no one flying the planes as a woman, but, like, I mean, that's that's kind of been corrected. But, I mean, I don't think that that's the main driver of what's going on, and... and I feel like there, there's a real battle about Last Jedi that a lot of people are having where a lot of people really hate that movie, and I don't really... I think Last Jedi is wonderful. I think it's a great, great movie. And there are shots in that movie... I, I saw that movie twice. I saw it in December. I saw it at a press screen, and then I saw it again a week later with my kids, and I haven't seen it since. But there are probably ten different shots in that movie that I still think about. Mm-hmm. I and, mean, it looks fantastic. Like Yeah. That nailed... The look of Star Wars, for sure. Yeah, and I, and I feel like Solo didn't, and that's one of the reasons I didn't like it that much. I don't. I mean, the Solo thing I was never excited about. I was in, that Donald Glover was playing in it. Um, I felt like it was just way too soon, and it's like too much Star Wars almost at this point. Like it's a little fatigue. Yeah. Um, especially as like okay, like it's cool that you're having a Solo uh, standalone, but I don't think like too many people were like clamoring. For it, you know, yeah. um, no, they all want Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, I mean, I, I hear that that's what they're planning on doing next for sure. Uh, but I don't know. I think they I mean, might I mean, have to s- slow down because it's 
like getting almost two, three films, Star Wars films a, a year is kind of a lot. But I don't know what what part of Obi Wan Kenobi's story do we still need to hear? We've already seen two different parts of it. I mean, just like yeah, I'm not when, sure. he's, when he's on Tatooine by himself for forty years. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't happen? necessarily be the most interesting uh, yeah, you know, backstory. Know. Or Boba Fett's backstory, where that's supposedly going to be a movie, too? I mean, I don't know why. I mean, I give you, like, the nerd pattern, like, what people, yeah. you know, they're just creating stories to it's sell to awesome. these people. That's basically what it is. It's not like, oh, there's a great story here. Let's tell yeah. it. Like, oh, there's a great character here. Let's create a story for it. Like, and that's kind of, I think, is the wrong way to go about it. Um, I was actually at a Comic-Con in here in Philadelphia a couple, couple months, or it was about a month ago. Um, I was covering it, and... Uh, the guy who played Boba Fett was there, and there were like people dressed as Boba Fett in line to meet him. I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, for a guy who was literally only in the original Star Wars for like less than the whole movie, and like only had a few yeah. like key scenes, he's it's just like an iconic look, and like they just like the design. Like I love the design. Uh, I just love yeah. the idea of him, but. He's never actually been like a full character. Like they even talked about doing a, a Darth Maul movie, and he was literally in the first uh, episode one for like all of like nine minutes, I think total or something like that. And like he's just like a cool design, and they want to create a story for it to sell to people instead of like, oh, there's a great story here. And let's. But I mean, I wasn't the Last Jedi. I liked. I mean, I had some some issues with it. Um, I just kind of some issues with just. the just the way the story is going in general but again like you wrote about like it's not our Star Wars anymore like they are definitely going towards a newer generation uh, of fans or whatever so they're trying to rebuild from that but I just think from the Force Awakens to the Last Jedi like that leap wasn't very clear and it felt like they felt like they made some mistakes in the Force Awakens and like they try to kind of course correct a little bit in the second one because um, a lot of points that they made in Force Awakens just never get brought up again and I did not like A Force Awakens. It literally felt mm-hmm. like the first Star Wars movie all over again to me. Um, that's the point. That's not the point. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want, if I want to watch, if, if I want to watch, you know, the Star Wars uh, story again, I can just watch the original again. Like I don't need new characters to tell me the exact same story. That like that's literally what it felt like. What well, I thought, uh, what I thought, and, oh good. I mean, I, I liked. Oh, good. Sorry. No, I finished. Go ahead. Well, I like Force Awakens. I liked it last Jedi more than Force Awakens, but I thought that, like you said, Force Awakens. I mean, it was just kind. Of, it was kind of a rehash of the first Star Wars. It was a, it was a very. Rehash. I thought it was a good rehash, but it was. But we didn't about do anything before. to push the series forward for me. Um, yeah, you introduced some cool new characters, but you didn't give them a ton of development, and I don't know. It just felt like again the whole nerd pandering thing. Like, oh, you love Star Wars, so remember how cool this was, like, here, we're just going to give it to you again. And I think J.J. Yeah. Abrams is, like, the king of that. Like, he did it with Star Trek. Like, he just yeah. retold the story. And it's just like, okay, like, we've all seen the story. It's cool, but, like, with updated visuals, and it just didn't feel like it did much in terms of, like, really pushing it forward. So I wasn't a fan. And, like, I actually wrote about it because, like, South Park, the whole, <laughs> a, oh, whole yeah, yeah. a whole, like, playoff of it. Out. It's, like, basically the exact same movie as before. Uh, it was like member berries or whatever. Like, remember right. this cool thing that you like so much? Here it is again, but with, you know, like, they did like a whole four episodes, like, dedicated to basically how Star Wars, like, was almost the exact same as. And I just, that's how I felt when I walked away from it. Like, I've only seen that movie one time. Well, I thought that uh, we, we mentioned Creed before, and Creed, I think it came out the same month. If it wasn't the same month, it was a couple weeks earlier. And that, I thought that Creed was, it, it, trans, it was a Rocky movie, but it transcended that to become. A completely different kind of great movie, whereas yeah, it, Force it, Awakens was just, you know, kind of the same thing over again. And I liked yeah. it, but not not quite as much as, uh, as Creed. I think it was just a very safe play for them. Like, yeah. they just didn't want to shake things up too much. And, like, they just wanted to for sure win, which, I mean, I don't know. The original, the prequels get a lot of shit, but honestly, like, the third one was, like, one of my favorite Star Wars films to this date. So, fans, like, now fans are, like, coming back to say, like, oh, we want George Lucas back. And it's just like, well, you were shitting on him for, like, 20 years, you know? Like, why would you, now you want him back because, okay, this isn't exactly what you wanted, but, like, so you, it's like, no matter what you do, you can't please, like, the fandom, basically. 
Yeah, that I mean that was, and I, I I touched on this in that piece that I that I wrote a couple months ago about how people really turned on George Lucas in a serious way after the prequels, but it's like he did create the movies you love too, and he is responsible for that. And if you're a Star Wars fan, George Lucas is the reason you're a Star Wars fan because <laughs> exactly. there'd be no Star Wars without him. And I mean the prequels, I thought I liked Phantom Menace the first time I saw it, and it might have just been the attitude I had going into it, and I'm not going to defend Jar Jar. I'm not going to defend various <laughs> other things, but I like yeah, that was a mistake. That but... that third act of Phantom Menace is really good. The part with Darth Maul and uh, yeah, all that Iconic, stuff in there. And then, sure. I mean, there's uh, Attack of the Clones. There isn't really anything that I can defend there, but uh, Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, there's some there's some good stuff there too. And I thought it it has a perfect final shot. I'll give it that too. So yeah, Revenge, Revenge of the Sith was one of my favorite. Uh, I know it's not popular opinion, but it was definitely one of my favorite out of all the movie so far I don't know it just doesn't the new ones just don't have me that excited to see like where they go in the future with Star Wars yeah I mean yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering like where, where where are they gonna what are they gonna do after I mean there's gonna be episode 9 and then what is it just I know they're talking about doing another trilogy I don't know where that's gonna be in the chronology or how that's gonna work but it's like this is that's an interesting thing that happened with the solo box office not that it was you know a complete flop, but it was less than it was going to be. And the assumption for everybody has been there's going to be Star Wars movies and they're all going to be hits. And yeah, they're going to keep making money. Yeah. They're going to keep making money from this forever. And what if they don't? What if? What if People it peters out eventually? Can fall out of and, love with the franchise for sure. And if it can happen to that, maybe it can happen to Marvel too, and maybe it can happen to other things that look indestructible right now. I mean, who knows? Pixar for sure can I mean, happen. Uh, I think Marvel's just really good at picking directors and actors that like really portray who they're playing. I just think that they're really good at that. And they, they've kind of nailed the whole funny action kind of uh, dynamic of all their movies. Yeah. And they can just keep putting, I mean, there's some recent ones like Dr. Strange that I, I liked, but it wasn't like, it felt kind of like cliche at this point, but then you can just tease like, Oh yeah, we got a big team up coming up. So and there's so many characters, and they just bought the, um, or they're trying to buy all the the rights back from Fox for like all the other, yeah, characters. So I don't know. I definitely see that one going on for a real long time. Yeah, I mean they're not going to run out of characters. That's not the problem. No, they're, they're always right. they're always going they're always going to have enough characters. And you know maybe like the Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean they weren't they were not a household name until they made a movie and they I, I mean I know the comics and I I had no idea about who they were but then after the movies I was like I love these guys you know yeah so Definitely. I mean they're, they're just really good at it and which is the complete opposite of like DC to me at this moment oh yeah absolutely that, and that's a whole other uh, and I mean Wonder Woman was great and they, they did a good job with that but it's just the it's a mess and when you ch- if you want to talk about toxic fandom there, n- nobody's worse than most people like the the <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the DCU people are, especially the people who are just like loyalists to Zack Snyder, are just the nastiest people you can possibly imagine when it comes to, you know, disagreeing with reviews and alleging conspiracy theories about, you know, Rotten Tomatoes or critics being paid off by uh, Marvel. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've been a critic for a long time. I've never gotten a check for Marvel, and I uh, suspect that I never will. And that's. That would be a pretty poor use of their resources, especially since, you know, some Marvel movies haven't gotten that great reviews, and every critic loved Wonder Woman, so whatever's yeah. going on with that today, so, I mean, and look, and I and I think, I mean, like I said before, I've, I, I have affection for characters like Superman and Batman, and I think I want to see good movies made about them, and they have been before, and I suspect they will be again, but just, it's not what's happening now, and they gotta do something about it, and put some I new people think- into it. I just think with something like Batman and like even like Spider Man, it's just like there's so many movies now. It's kind of like n- not that excited for the for the new ones because it's okay. We've gotten like four or five different complete story arcs for these characters, and like oh, you're gonna do it again, okay? And you know they're just gonna keep milking it. And I don't know for sure with DC. I don't know when, where they're gonna go with things, but I hear they're. Um, they're talking about doing like a Joker standalone and Suicide Squad two and just like all these, just different. They don't have a like, they don't seem to have like a clear plan like like Marvel did. They kind of rushed it. Well, they definitely rushed it. They tried to yeah. catch up in like three movies, 
instead of where Marvel built up to Avengers after what six movies or something like that, and then like they did it after two. So, yeah, I didn't think Justice League was quite as bad as Batman vs Superman because ba- Batman vs Superman was I think it was my least favorite movie of that year. It was just so 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 unwatchable that uh... <laughs> I'm glad other people felt that way. Yeah, that was hard. Ugh. That was <laughs> yeah. I was actually in. I was in San Francisco visiting my sister, and I got like, I realized I was missing this this previous screening for that, and I like made special arrangements to see that screening, and I like we got a babysitter, and I took my wife, and I just watched. This, I'm like, what the fuck? What what is this? <laughs> can I curse? I don't know if I. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um. So, yeah. It has as, it has a few moments in there, but there are definitely some terrible choices they've made. Uh. That year, oh. I saw, later that year, I saw some other. I, it was it was it was some foreign film. I think it was French at a film festival, and it also had a plot point about two different women being named Martha. I'm just like, <laughs> finally, a good movie where there's two different women named Martha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Martha part was kind of like, this is terrible. Who who approved this? Like, there's no way this should have been approved. This is horrible. Yeah, there was uh, the one really good Batman movie the last few years was uh, the Lego Batman movie. It was much better than the uh, than the the official Batman movies because it actually it had some understanding of what the Batman character was all about and of the history of the character and it kind of it made it it made fun of a lot of the uh, the different you know past cinematic things of Batman and it was uh, I didn't think it was as good as the regular Lego movie but I, it was still uh, you know pretty creative and pretty well done and uh, and speaking of the Lego movie that that was I was kind of looking forward to what. Uh, the directors of that could do a solo, but then they got fired and replaced with Ron Howard. So I guess uh, we'll never know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they seem to be doing movies for like everything that nerds or people like that like at this point. Like, there's either either it's based off a comic book or it's comic book esque. Like yeah. John Wick wasn't based on a comic book, but you would feel like it was based on a comic book. Yeah, and like I guess they're. Rebooting the Transformers and oh, great. the Bumblebee movie. Yeah, like they're just uh, about Bumblebee. I I didn't want to watch. The, I don't know if it was the trailer that just came out or the poster yeah, or something. Just, yeah, but something came up. I'm just like, no, I'm I'm not. I mean, I I really, I really despise those Michael Bay Transformers movies, and I and I loved the Transformers toys <laughs> when I was a kid. Um, the story I like to tell was uh, I don't know if it was Transformers two or three, but I uh, I was supposed to go to a screening for it. This was in 2011, I want to say. Um, I was uh, supposed to go to the screening for it, and I decided not to go. I decided to stay home, and uh, because I stayed home, I was I was there when my son took his first steps. So I like to say it was a uh, better choice. A, a, a choice between the the best humanity has to offer and the worst. <laughs> it's definitely a better choice of the two. Yeah, but those yeah, those movies are just. Uh, I don't think I ever saw the fourth or the fifth because it was just. Uh, I did not see the last one. Uh, There's that I like many. The first one. Oh yeah, God. I think the last last summer was the fifth one, and and, and that was the last flop. Was the so fifth one. They're, they're yeah. gonna, uh, it was and like then the that, last night or some some crazy. Like yeah, that. yeah, that's what it was. Um, yeah, I never. I mean, sometimes I can. I mean, I, the way my reviewing works is I, I review about one movie a week, and I have freedom to decide what I'm going to review. So if I don't want to go see something like that that I know I'm going to hate, I sometimes skip it. So at the end of the year, I make my best movies of the year list, and sometimes I'll make a worst movie of the year list, and I'll. Uh, I'll have a disclaimer Some of like, Razzies. yeah, what? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll have a disclaimer where I'll say something like, uh, well, just so you know, here's a long list of movies that I didn't actually see that are reputedly bad. So, uh, but um, like the new Jurassic Park, which is getting like the advanced reviews for that are just brutal, and I, I just, I don't even want to see it because I thought the, I didn't think the last one was good at all. I wasn't a fan of the last one. I really haven't liked the Jurassic Park movie since the first one, honestly, since the. But the, but the trailer is so good. Every time I see the trailer for the new, I haven't even seen the new, the first new one or whatever. But the first Jurassic World. Yeah, I haven't. I need. I wanted to see it, but now I guess I don't need to watch it because it wasn't very good. But the trailer for the new one. Every time I see it, I get goosebumps. I'm like, holy crap, that looks amazing. But tra- we know how trailers are. Usually, the trailer is better than the movie. So. Well, speaking of trailers, the new one that uh, debuted today was of the. Bradley Cooper, Lady Gaga, A Star Is Born remake. Yes, yeah, it's that. a real, it's a really good trailer. Huh. And I, I don't know how the movie's gonna be, but it's a really good trailer. It has it both is. of them, 
both of them are singing, and both and obviously she can sing. I didn't know that he, that he could, and he's the director of it too. So that's uh, huh. that comes in the fall, I believe, and I'm and I'm looking forward to that. And uh, the other one is the Queen movie uh, with uh, Bohemian about, Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody, which oh. is uh, I believe the Mr. Robot guy is playing him. Is he is. Right? Um, yeah. Malik Remy, I believe his name. Remy Malik, yeah, yeah. Remy Malik, and, uh, that's what it is. And that's a film where, the, I mean, the trailer made it look good, and I like Queen, and those are all great songs, so I'm sure that, you know, I'll enjoy that part of it. But uh, this is a movie that was in the this is in the works for many years, and for a while they were saying that uh, Sasha, Sasha Baron Cohen was supposed to play Freddie Mercury, which oh would have been God. absolutely perfect. I mean, he's probably... I mean, he looks just like him. Yeah, he looks like him. He can sing. We know he can sing. We know he can, you know... He's a little crazy. Yeah, he, he's... If you want him to sing on stage shirtless, you know, he's willing to do that. And, um... <laughs> So, but I mean, um, and that ended up not happening because I think the story was that uh, the members of Queen had control of the project and they didn't want to, they didn't want to make a hard R movie that really was worse and all and got into how he died of AIDS and all that stuff. Now, mm. I don't know. I've, re- I've heard a lot of things and I don't know how much of it is true about uh, how they want to soft pedal the fact that he died of AIDS. I don't know if that's true. Someone said that and I, that was like two years ago and I don't know. Um, but like, it seems to be not so hard R and not so, I was I, like the, the comparison I would make is to, I don't know if you saw the, uh, the movie where Michael Douglas played Liberace, mm-hmm. which was an HBO movie that Steven Soderbergh directed. And that was just, you know, rated R, or I guess it wasn't rated R cause it didn't actually open in theaters, but it would have been rated R and, uh, just, uh, completely warts and all completely not compromise, nothing. Uh, Dario, did we lose you? I don't see you on screen. No, I'm still here. You're still here. Okay. All right, good. Um, so um, we'll see about that. I mean, like I, like you said, you, you can't always tell with trailers, and there isn't always, you know. You know, trailers can lie, and trailers can make things look good when they're bad and vice versa. So, you know, who knows. But um, in terms of other movies, uh, I just saw Hereditary. Oh. There, I see you now. Which is? I'm so excited. I lo- I didn't love it. I liked. I thought it was really. I admire that something that I don't want to give away too much, but I don't. I admire that something that crazy was actually made and financed, and you know reached theaters. I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't in love with it. Most of the critics I talked to there were, and I think most of the most of the critical uh, response to that has been uh, very positive. Um, but um, it's A24, which is the studio that did it, and they just... A24 is fantastic. Yeah, they're really incredibly good at finding these uh, finding these uh, gems. And uh, people talk a lot about how, you know, these are the kinds of movies that aren't getting made anymore. These mid-budget movies that are really creative and really, uh, you know, offbeat, and A24 is doing them. And if you look, and I've said this before, where, like, if you look at the end of the year at A24's award slate versus, like, you know, the movies that it's you know, pushing for the Oscars. If you look at theirs compared to, like, Warner Brothers or Paramount, it's like, A24 will have 10 or 12 movies, and maybe I won't like all of them, but I'll like most of them, and it'll all be like, well, those are, that's a movie that I'm glad was made, whereas Warner Brothers, it'll be three or four things, and, you know, they probably don't have a chance, and it's probably either transparent Oscar made or, you know. Just tell me, does Hereditary, my biggest fear is that it goes, that it comes at night route. Mm. That the they need to be disappointed, or Where it's that, like a fantastic trailer, and then it was super disappointing. Um, I'll say that I didn't love the ending, but I'm not gonna say any more than that. Okay. Did you see Mother? I did. Yeah. Was it better than Mother? <laughs> um. Was it less assaulting than Mother? I liked Mother, but um, I don't know. I probably I liked did... Mother more than this. They're very different. I mean, they're both crazy, but. I mean, they're similar in that aspect that they're crazy, but um, yeah, it's uh, they're different. Um, but this one, I mean, Mother was very divisive. I just remember that, like, I saw that at a critic screening in the morning, and as soon as it was over, just like the comments people were making, it was like it sounded like Mr. Science Theater. Just like the, it was just funny comment after funny comment. But uh, I mean, that movie I thought was, I liked it, and I think I kind of fig- Mother, I, I kind of figured out early on what was going on, but I just thought, you know, how did this movie get made? How did it, how did they, how did they get funding? How did they agree to 
make this movie. I don't know how this could possibly be a hit. And of course it wasn't a hit because almost nobody saw it. But um, yeah, I, I, I admired how, uh, how big a swing it took. And same with Hereditary, even though it didn't quite, I, I didn't think it quite delivered. So, yeah, I mean, 824, even if I don't necessarily like some of the movies, I still like appreciate the fact that, you know, they took the chance to make that movie. Yeah. Because they definitely take more chances than most studios would, for sure. Right, right. So, um, I'd say my favorite movies of the year so far were uh, Annihilation. Yeah, I just saw that uh, last week, and I was surprised uh, how much I actually liked it. Which is another one that wasn't it wasn't a big hit. It didn't make a ton of money, but it just it kind of it has a uh, and I think it has a cult, and it's going to be appreciated more and more as, as the years go on. And uh, there's been a like if you go on I don't know if you're on film Twitter at all if you follow like film critics like for the couple of months after that came out it was just uh, that was probably the most discussed movie people were debating it people were talking about you know what it really meant what it you know what it reminded me of it reminded me of a Arrival a little bit and I didn't love Arrival I that was one I where I like just, Arrival. that was one where I disagreed with everybody where everybody loved it and I just thought oh, I I don't really. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the the big twist, I didn't have any complaints about the big twist, but I just thought it was like, it took a while getting there, and it wasn't, uh, I wasn't yeah, that this fun. slow burn uh, sci-fi film, which you normally don't get, but. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, I saw an eyelash, it was pretty good. Was yeah, and, I, and Death of Stalin, the uh, Armando Iannici movie. I just watched that on the plane. <laughs> yeah, I really, I really enjoyed that. Um, I thought that was, uh, and uh, my in-laws were actually just on an international flight, and they watched that movie on there as well. They were, uh, they weren't coming from Russia, so because it was like, because it, it was banned in Russia, actually. But Is it was it? Like, what, what I really liked about that was that it was it was I mean it was like it was in the style of all of Inucci's other stuff, and I love In the Loop, and I love the Eep, and I love the thick of it, and it was kind of similar to that, except it was about real people, and it was about real history, and it was you know set. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be more like a slapstick parody from the trailers, but then when you watch it, it's actually pretty serious with comedy, like dark humor in it. It was very dark, oh yeah. And it was very like, almost like a documentary though, because like they tell you who these people were and like what they like kind of did and like, so it was real, but it was surreal at the same time. I like that uh, they didn't make, they didn't even attempt to have anyone do a Russian accent. They, they, they no. just, they <laughs> just said right spoke. off, they yeah. just said right off the bat, you know, we're, we're not going to do that. We're just going to have everyone talk with their normal accent. So, you know, no way looked Russian. <laughs> Khrushchev is Steve Buscemi, and he's going to talk like he's from Queens or Brooklyn, wherever Steve Buscemi's from. And everyone else is going to be either English or Scottish, and then we're just going to go with that. And that was, uh, and it worked. I, 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 it stopped bothering me after about five minutes. So that was. Uh, yeah, I didn't even notice actually. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, Veep. Veep is just such a great show because Veep is like, if yeah, anything, funny. just right. really explains to you how politics really works. Like, to talk about House of Cards, but Veep is just. That's so much closer to what really goes on, where it's like, you know, some people really are malevolent and evil but the, in politics, but the majority of them are just, like, either too lazy to do anything about it or, you know, they're craven or they're, you know, gutless. And In the Loop is just such a brilliant film about uh, – it basically explains how the Iraq War started, where, yeah, there were some people who were lying, but then there were all these other people who, you know, didn't do anything about it because they – didn't know any better, and they couldn't, or they were too dumb to, or whatever. So I thought, in the loop. I haven't heard about that one. It's a British movie. It, well, in um, the thick of it uh, is uh, his uh, British TV show, and in the loop is kind of an American, American. Well, it's sort of British and sort of American. It's like it's the characters from the British show, but they come to America, and it's kind of about how the American and British governments, you know, started the Iraq War. And mm. uh, James Gandolfini plays a general who doesn't like war. It's it's really interesting stuff. Hmm. So I would, I would recommend seeing that it's from I think 2009. So yeah, I haven't seen too much this year actually. Hmm. Just a lot of big ones, you know, being overseas. Yeah, <laughs> kind of limited that. in what you will see. But uh, right, I don't know, Shannon. Have you seen anything this year that uh, you think is end of the year worthy? Yeah, um, I mentioned it in one of my what it. I don't remember what article it was in, but I mentioned it in... Oh, I think it was my mother, like, follow-up piece. I mentioned a movie called Raw, and I can't think of... Oh, the yeah. Rec- it's on Netflix. I can't... It's. I think she's French or something. I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but... Yeah, I think it's a French movie. But, oh, well, it's... Yeah, it's set in 
Belgium or something, but they're speaking French. But anyways, um, yeah, that movie, I don't think that's, like, a movie everybody would like or appreciate. Oh, no, <laughs> but, oh, wow. I, it's, I don't know, it just, the, it sounds like something that shouldn't be entertaining or funny or, well, yeah, thought-provoking, definitely. But I don't know. I just didn't expect to like it as much as I did. And it was just one of those movies that I, like, finished it. And I was just like, wow, that was that was something. And especially the ending. I don't want to ruin it. But just it's oh, yeah. very matter-of-fact. And, like, it doesn't really satisfy you. It just kind of, like, you it, like, fades to black. And you're like, wow, that was not what I was expecting or how I thought it was going to end. But kind of just, like, makes you make your own like figure it out yourself pretty much but mm-hmm. yeah, yeah that's a that's a crazy that's a crazy unsettling movie which uh i mean i'm not i'm not a big horror person i i, I will acknowledge that the last couple of years there have been some really really well done horror and i guess people call it um art house horror hereditary would be part of that and also stuff like the babadook or uh it follows or i guess you could say get out although i guess it kind of goes in its own category um but um yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of I'm I mean, I'm not I was never into any of the Friday the Thirteenth or Freddy or any of that stuff, I and mean, that was that was never really for me. And when I was a kid, all my friends loved that stuff. I just didn't really get what was what was so great about it. But uh, you know, and, fun. I, and then Scream, I liked Scream when that came out. But all the sequels and all the rebuffs of that just kind of got tiresome after a while. But like, uh, yeah, Raw Raw was a little much for me, but I, I admired it. Uh, I admired the crack of it for sure. Hmm. And, uh, but I have I'm friends who love it. Yeah, I have friends who just love that movie. It's uh, certainly not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. So it's a horror film? Yeah. I don't know. I would rather, I would much rather watch that than watch like Hostel or like Saw or anything. That, I don't know. For some, I guess because it's more, because it's more, it's, yeah, it's more character driven. Like I, I think Raw was more about the characters than it was about the like cannibalism or anything. I mean, that was obviously in there, but I don't know. I think it was more a story about, it was obviously a very well done metaphor of, you know, like coming of age or becoming a woman or whatever you want to say, but I don't know. I think it's a movie that's easily construed the wrong way. And if you don't, I don't know, I was an English major, like I've said before, I take everything with a grain of salt and probably analyze it way too much, but. I think it was a very it was very well done for what it tried to accomplish. Right, and coming out this weekend uh, is the uh, the Mister Rogers documentary, which is uh, "Won't You Be My Neighbor," which is excellent. It's uh, if you ever had any affection at all for Mister Rogers, you'll you'll enjoy this. My favorite guys on TV. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and he was uh, you know he was a big part of my childhood, of course. And uh, the film goes in, it kind of tells this whole story. It goes into like uh, it raises the question, you know. Was he really what he appeared to be? Was he really the great guy he was supposed to be? You know, was there any kind of hidden dark side? And it just determines, you know, no, there wasn't. He was, he was exactly just like completely earnest about what he was, and kind of one of the last people who was like that. And uh, when it comes to documentaries, that's probably my favorite of the year. I also, um, I'm really enjoying um, on Showtime. Uh, there's a documentary called The Fourth Estate, which is about the New York Times. And it's just covering, like, you know, the New York Times and how they covered Trump, I think, in the first year. And it's a four-part documentary. I've seen, I think, two of the parts, but uh, I think all four are on demand. It it uh, it played at a film festival, so I think it's, like, considered a film and eligible for documentary Oscar and all that. But uh, that's one I recommend if you care about that sort of thing. Um, I mean, I did watch, what's that one <clears throat> with the cult? It's like a documentary on Netflix. Um, oh, yeah. Um, Wild Wild Country? Yeah. I haven't seen. I'm going to watch that, but uh, I've heard good things. That one's pretty good. I would suggest if you like documentaries, definitely watch that one. It, uh, it goes pretty deep and it talks. It like raises some interesting questions, you know. Um, that that is a good thing about Netflix. I mean, there's a lot of. There are always good documentaries on there, and there's always you know, the more the movies that are up for the Oscars usually you know some of them will be on Netflix, like Icarus, which. Mm-hmm. I, believe, I watched that actually after you wrote that piece. Yeah, which I believe won the Oscar for best documentary. It did. Best yeah, documentary. which was just uh, an outstanding documentary. Which was 
just completely different from what was originally intended, where it's just yeah, it, it's it supposed turned to be, left real quick. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's it's supposed to be about this guy uh, just uh, being a uh, doing a funny thing where he takes steroids to win a bike race, and then he ends up pulling in this like, thing, and he gets into ends up being pulled into like Russian intrigue. It's really it's really outstanding. Yeah, it turned straight into the whole Russian uh, Olympic doping scandal, and basically he was like at the forefront of that, like kind of breaking that. And without like intentionally meaning to do that, you know, because yeah. he was tied in with the main guy, and uh, it's crazy. Like when you actually hear like the story behind it all, like it's insane. Yeah, that was a great one. Um, Thirteen, I think, was the other one I watched. I believe that's what. Oh, it was. the the Ava DuVernay one. Yeah, Ava DuVernay. Funny story. I am in that movie. You can see me right. in that movie. There is hey, a. Really? Uh, there's a scene where uh, Bill Clinton got into an argument with a woman who was protesting him, and I was there covering that speech, and I was standing next to the woman who was arguing with Bill Clinton, and that footage is in the movie, and there I am. So I'm not, I don't have to watch it again. just for that. Yeah, so if I ever meet Ava DuVernay, I'll be sure to mention that to her and tell her that, yeah, yeah, I'm in your movie. So. Tell her you need some royalties, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Netflix, I'm not a huge fan of, but documentaries wise they do a fantastic job yeah and, and with netflix i mean they you know there's always great stand-up comedy and and original shows but the, the funny thing is like the netflix original movies most of them just either aren't that good or don't really make a mark i mean they, they spend all this money on you know basically becoming a movie studio and putting all these movies in. i mean and mudbound is really good and Mudbound's there are a couple really of years, there's basically a new movie every week on there and most of them just kind of vanish without a trace i mean it's almost too much at this point because nobody yeah. can possibly keep up with everything that's coming out. Yeah. Um, like, I remember before it used to be like, oh, yeah, what, when Netflix original shows are coming out that I should watch, and I was like, there's too many. So I yeah. just wait till somebody tells me, hey, this is really good. You know, you should check it out. Um, but I mean, I guess if they got the money because they're spending what they spent like $200 million on Adam Sandler, I'm not sure that's paying uh-huh. out for them. <laughs> Well, Apple's going to try to do that. You know, I read about Apple and my day job, and like Apple trying to get some movie. movie well, business? Apple's Apple's basically, and it's it's kind of unclear exactly what form it's going to take. Whether it's going to be all through iTunes or whether there's going to be some kind of service like Netflix that they do. But Apple's just throwing money at you know. I think there's some new show that J.J. Abrams is going to produce. There's a show that Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon are going to be on, and it's like Apple has so much money. Apple has just billions and billions of dollars lying around from all the iPhones and stuff they sold. So they can, they can just say, okay, here's a couple billion dollars we're going to spend on this. And it doesn't, it's nothing to them. Whereas Netflix, that's all they do. Yeah. Netflix has is debt. Cause they, I mean, that's the way. Companies I mean, they're are. trying to catch up with Amazon in that space for sure. Cause yeah. Apple's been a little behind lately, a little home pod. They're late. Uh, the streaming, they're late. Amazon's kind of been killing it. Like Amazon's got some, they've got some pretty good original stuff too. Um, I can't. I watched something on there. I can't remember the name of it though. On Amazon, I uh, I got Amazon. I didn't have Amazon streaming for a long time, and then I got it and I watched like I binged a bunch of shows. I watched Transparent. I didn't see. I haven't seen the last few seasons of Transparent, but I've seen all of it. Well, see, I already had Prime, so when they like rolled it out, it was like, oh well, I guess I already had this, so let me just go ahead right, and check yeah. this out. You know. Right. I think that's how most people kind of got into it because it was like, well, you already have Prime because I like two-day shipping, so it was just like, here's a bunch of shows for you. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And then there's Hulu. I don't have Hulu. I have uh, I think I have, I used to have Hulu, but then it's just like, oh, I could sign up for Hulu, but, you know, I already have about 25 shows that I want to watch that I'm not caught up on, so why give myself more? So <laughs> <laughs> There's just way too many to keep yeah, up with really this is. point. Like I remember, like there's a new season of Arrested Development, which I think went on there about a week ago. That I haven't watched yet because, like, you know, I don't have time. I have other shows to watch. And when the last season of Arrested Development came on Netflix five years ago, there were about three other Netflix shows. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll watch Arrested Development because I like the show and I've it hasn't been on in ten years. But you know, now there's it's got a lot more competition than it used to. Have, so yeah, um, I mean, actually, that brings me the only show that I really watch like day of it comes out is Westworld at this point right now. I still haven't watched it yet. Yeah, I haven't either. You were just talking about how excited you were for it. I don't have cable. It's all recorded at my parents' house. Ah. 
Well, you know there's I internet. Want, I don't want to watch it on my tiny little... I want to watch uh, it on a big screen. <laughs> don't worry, I'll watch it soon. <laughs> so you don't it have is... cable. Do you have streaming services? What do you, what do you have instead of cable? Yeah, I use my PS4, so just like Netflix ah. and YouTube. So, uh, but I prioritize. I watch a lot of stuff on Netflix, and then if it's like Westworld or something, then I'll. I don't know. That's a show I like to, because I watched the first season like almost a year after it came out. So I watched like a lot of it at once because I could. I could watch as much as I wanted because it was all done. But yeah. so I don't know. I'm kind of saving them up so when I watch, I can watch like five at a time, and then. I don't know, that's like a show I don't want to wait like weekly. I want to just like experience the whole thing. So I mean, yeah, I'm already like, waiting, so it's just like I have to watch when it comes out. Yeah, Westworld, I, I, I think I watched one episode and I didn't get into it, or I just realized I had too many shows to watch at that time, so I haven't. That's just on my list of shows to catch up on. And I know this is only the second season, so I can probably do it, you know, not that much time. But like, uh, It's fantastic, I will say that. HBO, all these other streaming services have great shows, but to me... In terms of like production and story and everything, HBO still is like kind of the top of the heap for me. Like when they spend money on a show, they really turn it into a fantastic show. And like Game of Thrones, can't wait till yeah. it comes out. Uh, but yeah, Westworld is phenomenal. Yeah, it's weird that it's the summer and there's no Game of Thrones. It's it's kind of I was feeling the itch of like, hey, it's time for Game of Thrones. I'm like, oh no, it's another year. We gotta wait till next year for that. Yeah, and all, only eight episodes or something like that. Seven it's episodes. Fewer than that. It's like. I think it's going to be like five or six, but they're going to be longer. That's what they said. They're going to be like movie lengths. You're getting like five movies worth of Game of Thrones, so. Well, it'll be like the Sherlock show with Cumberbatch. I think it'll be like they're all, all, all the episodes are really long. Like it's, it's like a movie every time, so. Still kind of sucks that it's only five, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, but, they, they got to, I, mean, I think they have a certain amount of story to tell and they are doing whatever they need to do. And I'm sure it's massively expensive to make that show, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they film it all over the world. They film it, you know. And CGI, everything. It's like when they when they film the North, that's one country. When they film, you know, uh, uh, King's Landing, that's somewhere in Spain. I mean, there's there's all this, like, uh, it's always going on in different countries at different times. And I feel, yeah. Uh, you know, there, there's certain characters, certain actors who, like, were always in different places, so they were never on the same set at the same time until, like, you know, whenever Daenerys and Tyrion met for the first time, they hadn't been in the same place until then, so. I just think it's funny. There's so many characters on that show that they can switch out characters, like, from season to season that people who play them and, like, people don't even really notice. Oh, yeah, the mountain was different people different times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a bunch of times. Uh, you don't even really notice. It's like, oh, okay, new guy. Well, that's another thing where, like, Game of Thrones is so detailed, and there's so many characters, and there's so many lands, and there's all this, like, history, and I haven't read those books, but I know, like, it's a thing where you read the recaps of that show, and that's really important to, like, kind of understand what's going on, and there's a, there's a weekly column called Ask the Maester by a guy named Jason Concepcion, who writes for The Ringer, he wrote for Grantland before that, and he just, it's just this incredibly detailed weekly Game of Thrones column where it's, like, a Q&A where people ask questions, and he knows the books backwards and forwards, and he explains, you know, this is who that guy was, and this is his whole backstory, and this is, you know, the five generations of his house and why he's important and all this stuff. And so it's, uh, you know, that, that helps. And, and I always feel like I have a good grasp of it by the end of a season, and then a year passes and I forget all of it. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, it's it's too, it's almost too much information like, to really keep track of. Um Westworld is kind of in that vein, for sure. Uh, it's more sci-fi and thriller than that one is, but yeah. right now it's it's approaching it's approaching those Game of Thrones level for me, like yeah. how intense and like how into it they're getting. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, that's the only real show I'm watching like every time. I can mm. think of. Yeah, I mean, Billions, I, I got to watch that every Sunday night when that's on. The Americans, which just ended, had a really great final season. And that was, you know, that was on Wednesdays, and I would watch that, you know, live. But I mean, any other things, I mean, I'm, I'm content to let the DVR pile up if I, need, if I needed to. And, you know, I'm not, uh, I think the mark of a good show is if you're looking forward to it every week, and you're looking forward to the night when it's on, and you think, you know, I can't miss that this week. You know, that's, you know, if it's a yeah, Friday. Actually, that's a lie. Uh, Legion. But, I watch Legion. Legion. I watched a couple episodes of that, and I was it was another one where I kind of 
I liked it, but I just had so much to watch that I could. Uh... It's one of those you have to keep going because it's trippy as fuck, and like, it's not it's super meta. Like, I love meta shows, so it's super meta, and like, they talk about so many different things. It's kind of you don't necessarily what know what's real and what's not, and like, yeah, I don't know. It's it's one of the most interesting shows, and by far the most interesting superhero show I've ever seen. Um, I mean, I guess he's not superhero, but comic book show I've ever seen. Yeah. They go places that you don't necessarily expect. And I go, that's one show I say people should should try. Um, it's not for everybody, but it's definitely that does some very interesting things on it mm. about psychology and like the mind and everything, and like it goes pretty deep. Right. I'm on the second to last episode of Thirteen Reasons Why, so I'm kind of on edge because I need to finish it, but. <laughs> I never watched that. I watched the first season and I didn't love it, but I, and I just didn't really understand why there had to be another one. I mean, did they did they come up with a good reason to justify having another season? Well, I mean, they ended it with quite a few loose ends. I mean, Hannah's story was done. I mean, she they finished the tapes and she finished telling her story. But I mean, you find out more in this season that you know, like not everything was what it seemed. Like she had other things about her life that wasn't revealed in the first season. So I think it was warranted. I I thought the same thing originally because I read the book a long time ago. And when I heard that they're making it into a show, I was excited because I was like, oh, okay, they'll, you know, do like what was in the book and then that will be it. Kind of like series of unfortunate events. They're like doing the books and then they'll be done. Like they're being true to the, to the books. But I don't know. I think... I don't know, it has a lot of controversy surrounding it, and I understand where people are coming from, but I think if it starts a conversation and or helps one person, mm-hmm. then I think that it's warranted, and there are trigger warnings on every single episode, so I mean, if you really don't want to watch it, like, you, you don't have to, and I think mm-hmm. it's just an important thing to be out there if people want to watch it, so I think I it's warranted. It, I guess there's an actor on that show named Steven Silver. Oh, really? Because oh, really. <laughs> he's been popping up in my Google Alerts lately. You know, where oh. I, uh, I have Google Alerts for my name so I can basically see, you know, if something I've written has been published. And uh, <laughs> he's been, I'm getting all these 13 Reasons Why stories. I'm like, hey, what's, who's that guy? Why didn't I, why didn't I know about this? <laughs> I'll have to mention I'm, that if I review one of his movies. <laughs> I'm curious who it is now. It's probably um, like, I don't know if it's any of the main people, but I will hmm. find out. You might spell it with a V and I'm a PH, but um, yeah, the actress who played Hannah, um, Catherine Langford, is that her name? Mm-hmm. She was in uh, the movie Love Simon this year, which and I love that really, movie. Yeah, that I really, great. I really, really enjoyed that movie, and I and I liked that. Uh, I thought she was really good in it too. Yeah, her accent in the second season of Thirteen Reasons Why, like it, or maybe it's just because I know she has that accent now, but like she, it sounds like it slips a bit more in the second one. Like she's kind of given up on trying to hide it as much, but she, she is, has a nice accent. She's so. English or what is she? Um, I believe she's Aus- she's either Aus- Australian or New Zealand. I think Australian, though. But Yeah, if, if you know someone from either of those places, make sure you get it right. Cause oh, yeah, yeah. No, you know New Zealand's very, like, it's very distinct, so I'm pretty sure she's Australian. Right. But, yeah. So I need to go finish that. Maybe yeah. after this. All right. <laughs> So, I mean, I mean, Stephen, you're a little off center. Can you... Am I? Okay. Yeah. Is that better? A little more. Okay. That. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Well, a little bit more actually. Maybe so, I can. Uh... Yes. Yeah, oh, that's the light thing. All right. Uh. Oop. How's that? Other way. Other way. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, um. So. Last thing, you know, we ask this question for everybody. My partner isn't here right now, but uh, <laughs> we got to ask you. You know, um, in my Shyamalan movies, am I? What about him? Just do I like him or not? You know, you're familiar with his, you know, movies and everything. Yes. So there's always question: Signs or The Village? Signs of the Village. Uh, yep. Which one do I like more? Yep. I'd say Signs. <laughs> You're zero for two in the last ones. Uh oh. No, I'm the I'm signs. Oh 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 oh. Okay, never mind. You're winning. I'm Just kidding. Never mind. Far in the head away on this one. 
So it's just a you know a running thing with me and my my other guy. Uh, right. Well, M Knight is from Philadelphia, and he's kind of a Philadelphia favorite son. He has made either all of his movies or nearly all of his movies either in Philadelphia or near it, and um, he's kind of a champion of film in Philadelphia. And uh, a funny thing was, I went to a Q and A with him. Uh, this was probably five or six years ago, where it was in a sold out building. And this was at, like the very low point of where everything he'd done in years had fought, for years had flopped, and it was before he had to come back. And so everybody, he was just kind of thought of as a laughing stock in a lot of places. But like everyone in this room just kind of agreed to suspend disbelief and treat him like a star, and you know, act like this, this wasn't all happening. And um, they had all they had a Q and A, and all these people were asking questions about, you know, I, uh, you're the reason I want to be a filmmaker. Can you sign my screenplay? Can you do all this stuff? And uh, was this post Avatar? This was, I mean, Last Airbender. Yeah, it was. I think it was around that time. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was pre uh, the last two, or that were that were better. Yeah, or that were did did better at least. Um, but um, and he even mentioned, you know, uh, yeah, that's uh, you know, some of my last couple movies. You know, they've they've been appreciated more overseas than uh, than here in America. <laughs> like, I mean, he was like he was bringing up the elephant in the room because no one else would. So uh, I thought. Um, I don't know. I, I interviewed him once. He seemed like a seemed like a good guy, and he's uh, he's constantly showing up at uh, Philadelphia Seventy Sixers games. And, yeah, uh, I do see him there. I mean, he seems to be a legitimate fan, and not just you know a celebrity who shows up. Because uh, when uh, when uh, the Eagles were in the Super Bowl this past season, there were and I don't want to get into the whole thing with Trump that was in the news yesterday, but uh, there were um, pretty much every celebrity with a with a claim to Philadelphia just started showing up at all the games and uh, no, I'm sure there's there, there's a debate in town over uh, Kevin Hart whether we stick a scene him uh, showing up at games because he he tried to crash the stage at uh, the at, Bowl, at, yeah. at, Super, at the Super Bowl and people were people were with him for that and then he started uh, he started insinuating himself into Sixers uh, playoff celebrations as well so I mean yeah. you gotta whoever's high you gotta show up you know that's Absolutely. how it always yeah. goes for sure Definitely. I mean, I'm sure M. Night's a great guy. He's just he's made some horrible, horrible movies. Yeah, um, <laughs> the happening was absolutely terrible. Oh yeah, uh, sure. But and I actually, his, I actually, his last I, one was pretty good. So I didn't love uh, Split. I thought it was actually not that good. I, the, the one before that, The Visit, I thought I enjoyed. And uh, I mean, I was I like re- Split. I was rooting for him to make a comeback because I, you know, I was like, I, I, he's done some great work in the past. You know, I kind of was hoping that he could do it again, but. Uh, I mean, I probably like Split more because it's tied into the Unbreakable universe. Uh, yeah. The visit but. was really good, though. What was the visit? The yeah. visit. I mean, I I really love Split too, but I forgot about the visit. But yeah, that one was good too. I don't think I've seen that one. <clears throat> Old people are already kind of scary sometimes, and that makes it oh, like yeah. ten times worse. So. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, I think that's it for this this week's episode of the Fearless Show. Um, right. We've talked about a lot of stuff, a lot of films, a lot of movies. If you guys have any questions, comments, topic suggestions, or if you want to talk to Stephen about any of his pieces, because you know, like I said, do you uh, people have some strong opinions oh, yeah, about sure. some of your <laughs> about some of your articles, uh, which I think is a very good thing. Um, you can do that over. Or under the comments anywhere this goes up, uh, or you can email us at podcast at livinglifefearless.co or go to livinglifefearless.co uh, slash podcast and fill out the form there. Where can people find you and talk to you? All right. Well, uh, my Twitter is Stephen Silver. My name that's S T E P H E N S A L V E R. And you can find my movie reviews at Splice Today. You can look up my name on Rotten Tomatoes to see just all my movie reviews from everywhere. Um, SteveSilver.net is my blog where I usually link to things, and I have a newsletter there that you can subscribe to. So, okay, uh, Shannon, I'm gonna plug anything you're going going on. Um, yeah, I'm at Mia Two Shakes. Um, M I A T W O S H A K E S, like Pulp Fiction, like my poster back there. Ah. If you want to follow me, um, I'm not gonna plug my travel agent <laughs> to Instagram because I feel like that's a cop out, but yeah, so go comment on my articles because nobody ever does, and I've always <laughs> wanted somebody to comment on one of them. Somebody I don't know, so that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Let me yeah. say to you quickly that Pulp Fiction was the movie that got me into movies. 
I was, I think, 16 when it came out, and it was, uh, that got me into, you know, paying attention. I mean, I always like movies, but that, that's the movie that really got me to pay attention to what movies were about and how filmmaking worked and things like that, and it really set me on a path to write about movies, so. Yeah, it's same. Iconic. My favorite movie of all time. My cat's named Mia, too. She's over there sitting <laughs> on the table, so. But yeah, that's where you can find me. Go comment on my stuff. I'd really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. I'll comment back, so. Yeah. All right, uh, that's it for this week's episode of the Show. Today's date was June 6, 2018. We will be back next week with more stuff. Uh, and, yeah, thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, subscribe, share, follow, whatever, whatever. Uh, we appreciate it, and we'll be back shortly. Peace. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.